Hello YouTube and uh, welcome back to this creation series that we're working on. Uh, last time we talked about character description and how there's a difference between uh, your POV characters description uh, through circumstance of themselves and uh, the more a little bit more detailed description of the character he is viewing or interacting with he or she and that is kind of a hard balance uh, with the characters that they're viewing because you don't want to give too much away you want to let the reader be able to create their own vision in their imagination but you also uh, want to give enough information that they know what you're talking about so it's kind of a balance and, and you, descriptions get cut uh, and, and tweaked uh, through the uh, draft and redraft process um, and the editing process. So uh, now we're going to talk about description of scene and setting. Uh, setting is the overall uh, view of, what, of what's going on. Uh, are you in a wilderness? The scene is the microcosm of that setting. So... Uh, that's the way I think about it. So um, you you want the thing about um, doing your description of a place. Uh, for example, um, you know I said I'm going to change it from a grassland. I want it to be further away, more desolate, something almost um, illusory in in where he wakes up. And then we're going to take Pater out. And that's one of the most th important things you want to remember. No matter how much you like things about your story, if it doesn't make sense for it to be there, you have to cut it out. Uh, name and point, Canto Bite. He loved that scene. He loved that message. But 90% of that should have been cut out because it wasn't moving the story along. And that's really what description helps do. Everything works in concert. Everything is a weaved tapestry when you're telling a story. That's why... Um, if you read a lot, you will see, um, the simile between tapestries and stories because it's a weaving of different items that have to come together in a special way for it to be interesting and fun and move the narrative. So when you, when you describe a place that you're entering, and I'm going to describe two here because the last place we're going to use is going to be a surprise. Because at the end of this series, and I think there's only going to be like two or three more, possibly just two more. Um, at the end of that, I'm going to give myself a week to write the story out, uh, revise it a little bit, and then the last episode, uh, the very last episode in this series will be me reading the story so that you guys can understand from beginning to final product how this went. So when, you, when you're going through a... a a scene and you're describing what's around you and what things look like i tend to do this a lot on the other end on on the rough draft doesn't have as much detail as the final draft which is kind of backwards from what a lot of people do it's just my process is the way i do it uh do it however you feel comfortable doing uh but the thing is that if you do it this way um you can you can go back and cut what you don't need and it's very important that we do something similar to this uh, when we're making our notes. So when you're describing a place, you want to put as many senses as you can in your description. You want to, um, I've seen smell is the most common. Sight, of course, is, has to be there uh, unless, you, unless your POV character is blind. Uh, sounds are, are very common. You don't hear taste very often, but I have used it in a metaphorical way where he walked in to the restaurant and the air tasted like pizza sauce, something like that, just off the top of my head. Um, when you do that, you elicit um, a psychological trigger in the human brain that, that combines memory and senses with the imagination and brings the story to life. So when when we describe the first scene we're going to setting and scene we're going to describe is when Loader wakes up and we'll do it here. Um, uh, lone, uh, he wakes up on a lonely dirt track 
on what looked like a plane of basalt sand. As he sat up and looked around and took in the sights, he was overwhelmed with the smell of burning things. Now we can get more detailed into that later, but that's basically the concept. You want to invoke as many emotional and sensory responses as you can in your description. At the same time, they have to be kind of vague so that people can imagine the landscape. Um, so unlike, you know, my, one of the people I think of as a mentor, Stephen King, um, he, he tends to over, I mean, he'll spend a page describing the way somebody touches, uh, brushes their teeth. But the reason he does that is because he's always got inner monologue from the characters going through. The Shining is a great example of this. While he's describing, not only is he invoking the emotional and sensory responses in his characters or in his, uh, audience but he's also doing it with his characters um where um jack in the shining is talking to himself you know they've got to take their medicine he's he's rehashing what his father did to him when he was a child and it, it it's it evoking those emotional responses so that that's one right and then you want to get the feelings in there so I would, I would say, I would put something like, um, the desolation of the place evoked a sense of dread in the man. He asked himself aloud, and I'm doing this instead of internalizing it because I'm thinking that he's not going to believe he's where he is. He's going to think he's still drunk and he's having a hallucination or something, right? Um, so that's, that's what you want to do. Now, the next scene that we're going to describe, the, the second one in this, is we're going to describe the castle once he enters the castle right and so that's a totally different feeling and emotion um so loader looked around as he entered behind the doorman the place was cold both in temp and style everything appeared to be made one of the stone stone that must the black sand um, out upon the plains uh. so um, loader looked around as he entered behind the doorman the place was cold in both temperature and style. Everything appeared to be made from some form of stone that must have produced the black sand out upon the plains. Though the floor was of white marble, uh, the um, enormous, so we're giving it some dimension, 
entry hall had the odor of sterility. Now, I may not in the final draft be this blunt with it because it is kind of blunt. And I'm only doing it in one paragraph, but we want we want the impression that this is not a friendly place. It's not inherently evil or menacing, but it's cold and and just like just like our our antagonist Solana is going to be a very cold yet beautiful, just like you know the the woman in uh, she walks in beauty like the night. Is, is has a cold beauty um, so that as you can tell we're trying to reflect our inspiration in as many aspects as we can in the description and the story itself so next time what uh, that that's it for this time and like I said there is another scene that I could describe but I want to keep it a surprise so that you guys can see my thought process at the end once all of this comes together in a fi finished tale so the next time what we're going to talk about, what we're going to discuss is plot and story. Now, I did say in the beginning of this, I don't tend to plot. What I mean by my version of plotting is I write a rough outline. And this is the guideline I want the characters to follow. They may not end up at that end point. And what I do, instead of changing the characters or give them a mechanical device to put them back on the right path, is sometimes I'll change the situation to fit them is that they thought they were in one thing but it turns out it's another and it's a, it's a trick that a lot of people use and it's very effective so if you'll join me next time uh, it'll be in a couple of days and we will go over that um, and you know as always please provide feedback if you have any questions or you have any um, uh, commentary or suggestions on um more information that you would like or you think i'm totally wrong i can have that discussion please feel free to leave a comment below and and uh you guys have a blessed day thank you hey this is story man jack i just wanted to say thank you for watching i appreciate everybody who uh tunes in and uh look forward to seeing you next time please if you enjoyed the video like share and subscribe and remember, you're the creator and writer of your own story. Make it a great one. Thank you.